All right, here we go. Uh, lecture number three. Today we're going to talk about linear independence. Independence. And linear. Oh gosh. Um, dependence. You need an eraser. Okay. So that's our topic today. Uh, we're going to talk about um, sets of vectors uh, that can be either linear independent or linear dependent. Okay, so I'm going to have some some set of vectors. So v1 up through maybe vn, which is a set of vectors. And <clears throat> given a set of vectors. Um, I should be able to say whether they are linearly independent or linearly dependent. Okay, they have to be one or the other. Uh, figuring out if they're linearly independent or dependent is not necessarily simple, but they have to be one or the other. Okay. Think of think of like a, a number. A number has to be even or odd, right? It's a similar idea. It has to be one or the other. So. Uh, what what the heck do these things mean? Well, um, let's let's think about these using uh, uh, R two um, favorite little space to draw here. So given these axes, uh, this is R two. Um, linear dependence. Let's start with that. They're they're kind of opposites of each other. So if you can understand one, you can understand the other. So let's start with dependence. Linear dependence. Um, I want to say the the best way to explain it is is a, a number of ways to get from the origin to the origin, uh, and that sounds kind of weird, right? But so we're we're at the origin, okay? And I have some amount of vectors. Um, so let me let me just say I have two vectors here, uh, one two, and uh, uh, one one. Let's say. Okay, so one one looks like this, one two kind of goes up a little more, something like that. Eh, it's not perfect, but whatever. Um, so number of ways you can get to. Uh, I like that example. I'm gonna, I'm gonna new page. Um, okay, so axes, axes. Uh, I'm gonna do the uh, e one here again, and e two. This is. Standard basis, it's best to start with these. Um, so once again, we're looking at R2 here. Okay, number of ways to get from the origin to the origin. First and foremost, easiest way to do that, 0E1 plus 0E2 is the origin, right? You don't go anywhere. You just stay there, and you're there. Hey, all right. Okay, now <clears throat> let's say we have some amount of e one. Okay, so we've gone somewhere, you know, maybe we've gone over here, right? Or, you know, we can go negative, whatever. If we have some amount of E1s. Now, E2, with these E2s, all I can do is go up and down, right? You know, E2 is a vector straight up, so positive E2s let me go up, negative E2s let me go down, but I'm never going to be able to get back to the origin. You know, once I've moved away using E1, there's nothing E2 can do to get back to the origin. So what I'm saying is that this is the only way, the only way to get to the origin using E1 and E2. <clears throat> I have to have my coefficients be 0, 0. So let's, let's, look at, um, let's look at this algebraically, this exact same example, but let's look at the algebra instead of the geometry. Maybe the algebra will make a little more sense. Um, I'm going to take a linear combination, alpha E1 plus beta E2. And I want to get to the origin or the zero vector, zero, zero. Okay, so alpha times some vector, one, zero, plus beta times some vector, oops, um, well, that's right, but I want to write zero, one here. And I want to get to zero, zero. Okay, so let's get the multiplication. I can just multiply these in. This is going to be the vector alpha, zero, and this is going to be the vector zero, beta. And I want to make it equal to the vector 0, 0. Uh, vector addition, I have the vector alpha, beta, 
and I want to say that that equals the vector zero, zero. Well, this is telling us that both alpha and beta are going to have to be equal to zero. It's the only way that's possible, right? In which case, alpha, you know, we're, it was back to what we were just talking about, alpha is zero, beta is zero. That's, so that is linear independence. Okay. Um, what it is is there is one and only one way to make the zero vector. If that's true, we have linear independence. So let's write out kind of a uh, um, not so rigorous but a partial definition here. Um, uh, how do we want to say this? Let's say two vectors, uh, u and v are linearly independent if the only way oh, that's a y, way to create the zero vector with u and v is the, I, get, I want to call it the trivial way. I haven't really defined what that means. But what I mean by the trivial way is that the coefficients, these alpha and beta, have to be 0 and 0. So uh, this is the only possibility. 0u zero plus 0v zero equals 0, 0. All right? There is no other combination of u and v that gets me back to um, the the origin. So so let's look at a few examples here. Um, if I did, I was looking at kind of looking at the vectors one two and one one, okay, um, and I'm I'm wondering this set of vectors one two and one one is this linearly independent? Well, I take alpha one two plus beta one one set that equal to 0, 0, and so just algebra, let's solve this. Alpha, 2 alpha, plus beta beta equals 0, 0. So I have alpha plus beta, 2 alpha plus beta equals 0, 0. Um, and <clears throat> well, you know, it's a system of linear equations. Alpha plus beta equals 0, 2 alpha plus beta equals zero. Uh, this is so simple we can we don't need a matrix, we can just look at this. If we subtract these two, I'm gonna get alpha equals zero. Um, and that is also going to give us that beta equals zero as well. So this is the only way to to get to the origin. So this set is linearly independent. So therefore um, this set of vectors is linearly independent. All right, cool. Let's look at a non-example, right? So this is an example. Let's do a non-example. Um, sometimes uh, non-examples can be, you know, just as enlightening or, or even more enlightening than a regular example. Um, it shows something when it's, when it's not uh, what it, we want it to be. Um, so uh, how about the vector uh, 1, 1 and the vector 2, 2? <clears throat> I claim that these two vectors are not linearly independent. So let's check that. Alpha 1, 1 plus beta 2, 2 equals 0, 0. Uh, what do we have here? Alpha, alpha. Oh, man, that alpha is just... <clears throat> That's just awful. I'm going to make a lot of social commentary on my alpha here while my computer catches up with itself. Just look at this. Oh, it's just terrible. Look, it's like it's not even coming down right. It's like curving around. This looks like a squiggle. You know, it's, oh, here we go. <clears throat> so alpha, alpha plus 2 beta, 2 beta, 0, 0. Adding up these two vectors, we get alpha plus 2 beta, alpha plus 2 beta equals 0, 0. Um, and two equations, two unknowns, alpha plus 2 beta equals 0, alpha plus 2 beta equals 0. When, when we reduce this, right, 
we have an augmented matrix. After we row reduce it, we're going to get something like this. Boom, boom, boom. And we all know, since it's a, a line of zeros down here, this is infinitely many solutions. Okay? And really, right, when we were talking about um, linear independence, we were talking about there is one and only one solution. All right, let's go back. Uh, U and V are linearly independent. If the only way to create a zero vector with U and V is the trivial way, there's only one solution, zeros. That's the only way to do it. Here, I have multiple ways to do it. Moreover, I have infinitely many. It doesn't matter how many, so long as it's more than one. Okay, so you can think about this in terms of, right, this is singular. Uh, singular. Uh, whereas on this side, this is plural. Right, so think about like the English language. When you're using plural, that's just multiple if there's more than one. And if you're using singular, that's like the stickler. That's, you can only use singular, singular if there is only one, always. So linearly independent means there's only one. That's kind of your equivalent of singular. This is not linearly independent, right? This is plural. There are multiple ways to get back to um, the, the origin, right? I can take two times the vector one, one, and subtract off one of the vector two, two, and I'll certainly get to zero, zero, right? So that's a, a non-trivial way of getting back to the origin. So, so this would not be linearly independent, and hence, linearly dependent. Uh, so therefore, this set of vectors is linearly dependent. Okay, it was not linearly independent, therefore it must be linearly dependent because they're opposites. Okay, so let's let's go back and, and look at our definition once more. U and V are linearly independent if the only way to create the zero vector with U and V is the trivial way. Okay? Linearly dependent means that it is not linearly independent. So all you need to do is check for linear independence. And if it's not linearly independent, then it's linearly dependent. Ta-da! Pretty easy. <clears throat> now, this, this can be extended to greater than uh, two vectors. So let me, let me redo the definition for linearly independent. Um, <clears throat> the vectors uh, u1 through un are linearly independent if the uh, only solution to the equation. Um, so um, this maybe alpha one u one up through alpha n u n equals zero. So the vectors u one through u n are linearly independent if the only solution to the equation alpha one u one all the way up uh, plus all the way up through alpha n times u to the n equals zero is the trivial solution. So uh, 0 times u1 plus 0 u2 all the way up through 0 un equals 0. So linearly independent if the only way to get back to 0 is having zeros in front of every single vector. Okay. For linearly dependent, it's just that it is not linearly independent. Now, <clears throat> looking back at our example here, these were fairly easy to calculate using this system of linear equations, but in some sense, you know, all we're doing, if we get down to it, we got to this point here, um, all we're doing is, is then row reducing or, or solving the system of linear equations, and we can use that using row reduction. Um, the row reduction we're doing, you know, we can throw that in a matrix. I need my computer to catch up with itself again. Um, but we can just throw this in a matrix and row reduce and, and see what we get. Now, 
So I can write this as 1, 1, 2, 1, maybe augments it with 0, 0. The augment isn't going to matter because we're always equal to 0. So <clears throat> instead of doing that, though, let's say, like for this example, we have a bunch of vectors u1 through un. Um, right? We're going we're gonna to do some linear combination of them. Well, it's going to turn out that once we, you know, play with everything, it's just u1, u2, plug them all into a matrix as the rows. U1, U2, UN, right? And row reduce this. Uh, so row reduce. Or really, really what we want to do is find the rank of it. So let me write the rank of this. U1 through UN, okay? Now, if the rank is equal to N, the number of vectors. If the rank of this matrix, after we, you know, row reduce, figure out the rank. If the rank is equal to n, the number of vectors, then we know with that augmented matrix there's one and only one solution, right? We got down and, and there was one solution. So that it tells us then that this set of vectors u1 through un is linearly independent. If the rank the rank can't be greater the, than n, but if the rank of u1 through un is less than n, then we are linearly dependent. So uh, once again, it, you know, there's always the question of, you know, it's great to understand, but how do we actually check this? This is this is going to be the easiest way to check for linear independence or linear dependence. Throw it in a matrix find the rank, which means row reduce, look at the number of non-zero row vectors left over. Okay, so <clears throat> that's linear independence. Um, once again, similar to the SPAN lecture, uh, I hope that helped you out. Um, and if not, feel free to come in and talk to me. I know this is a weird and difficult and abstract concept, so it takes time, you know, it kind of has to settle with you, kind of has to bump around inside your mind for a bit before you're really going to have a sense of what in the world this is. Um, so, yeah, hope this was enlightening. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.